On my channel, I have shared many videos about sensory processing disorder. I will have a playlist linked to up above for you so that you can check out all of those videos. But in this video today, I just want to share with you how a sensory processing disorder can change over time with a child. Hi, I'm Michelle and this is A Common Life. I'm a mom of five children and I have two children with sensory processing disorders. Now, a sensory processing disorder is sometimes a very difficult thing to diagnose because as human beings, we all have different sensory sensitivities. And so some children may just be more sensitive than others, but then there are other children who do indeed have a sensory processing or a sensory integration disorder. For those children, they will need to speak with their pediatrician and other medical professionals to receive a diagnosis and then decide whether or not they need some types of therapies to help them with that. I do not have any medical degree or anything like that. So everything that I am saying is just coming from a mom who has experience with children with a sensory processing disorder. But I thought it would be helpful to kind of see how a sensory processing disorder can kind of change over time and how you can see those warning signs when your child is still young. Now, all of the things that I'm about to share with you may or may not be the same as what your child has gone through because everybody is so incredibly different and all of our brains work so differently. So there is no real um, like typical characteristics of a child with a sensory processing disorder. Some, as I shared in another video, can be hypersensitive or hyposensitive or a mix of the two. And so there's lots of different ways that a sensory processing disorder can present itself in a human being. But these are just a few things to kind of understand how it can change over time. Your child may be very, very young when you first realize that they have a sensory processing disorder. For us, one of our children literally spent the entire first year of his life crying. All he did was cry or nurse or cry or sleep or nurse. And it was very, very difficult. Um, and at that time, I didn't really understand enough about sensory processing disorder to understand that that was what was going on. It wasn't until he was much older that um, the doctor said, this is why he was this way. He had a sensory integration disorder. He was unable to self-regulate himself, unable to calm himself. That's why he just wanted to be held all the time or nursed. And that were the, those were the things that basically brought him calm. Some of the signs of a sensory processing disorder in a baby is um, there can be some that are opposite. So one can be that, that they feel very stiff. When you hold them all the time, they feel very, very stiff, like they almost can't relax. Or the opposite is they feel very, very loose in your arms. They just, they, you know, they should be, they should be a little bit stiffer or maybe hold their head up better or things like that. And they just kind of feel really limp. Another sign is that they don't want to be cuddled. They hate being cuddled. They don't want to be swaddled. They don't want to be held in a baby carrier or a wrap or things like that. They just hate that feeling and it makes them very, very upset. They may also have problems with eating or sleeping. Maybe they really can't get on a schedule or they only sleep for really short amounts of time and then they wake up. They never sleep for long periods of time, even at an age where that would be appropriate. One of the biggest clues is that they are incredibly fussy and are completely unable to calm themselves. Nursing or a pacifier or a swaddle blanket or a wrap or things like that just do not calm them down. And then it's a sign that something is definitely going on. And I know in our case, the pediatrician at first assumed, rightfully so, that maybe it was colic or maybe he was allergic to something that I was eating or things like that. So I took dairy out of my diet. I took soy out of my diet. I did a lot of different things to try to figure out what was going on but nothing helped, nothing changed anything. And it took us a couple more years to even figure out that it was indeed a sensory processing disorder that was causing all of these things. And then kind of the opposite of some of those is a child who constantly needs to be touched and constantly needs to be, um, have like sensory input, maybe to be swaddled past an age when that's appropriate. Lots of children, you know, when they're, when they're little, little babies, they need to be swaddled. That's just kind of natural for a baby or a newborn. But if they get close to the age of one and they're still wanting to be swaddled all the time, that's not age appropriate. That's not developmentally appropriate. So that might be a sign to you that they're seeking this, this sensory input that they're just not getting enough of. Then as they grow up and they're more of a preschool age, some of the things to look for would be um, sensitivities to touch, like their clothing. Do the tags and the labels on their clothing upset them or their socks are too tight all the time? Now, before you immediately think, oh no, my child must have a sensory processing disorder, Lots of kids, especially that preschool age, are just kind of difficult. And they will complain about all those types of things. They'll complain that they don't like their food, that it tastes bad, or that it feels weird, or 
all these kinds of things. And that's really just them learning to express. They're learning, they're learning how to express these feelings that they are having. It does not always mean that there's a sensory integration or processing disorder. It just means that they're expressing themselves and ex it's explaining to you their likes and dislikes. And that is completely normal and completely age appropriate. It gets to the point where if you put a child with a, t or a shirt with a tag on your child and he like has a meltdown over it and this is constantly happening over and over again, then at that point it may be a clue that there is something going on. Another clue is that the child cannot relax and does not ever feel comfortable. They're constantly moving around, trying to reposition, maybe take their shoes off and on and things like that. And any you know three, four year old is gonna be wiggly and they're gonna move around a lot. But you can tell a difference between just a child who has energy and a child who is genuinely uncomfortable and kind of unhappy, almost in their own body. They feel very uncomfortable and they just can't ever really settle. Now those regular sensitivities to like food and clothing and things like that may be normal, but then on top of that, you may find that your child is incredibly sensitive to lights or sounds. And um, I think that a lot of children, like they'll hear an ambulance and cover their ears and that's very normal. But if your child hears like a phone ringing and covers their ears, that may be a clue that, you know, that's a sound that we all should be able to hear and it shouldn't really bother us. But if that bothers your child or other sounds that you just don't think would be as bothersome, that may be a clue that they have some issues with their sensory processing, that these are much louder to them, are stronger and just more profound for their own little ears. Another one is that they find the playground or like a library story time or something like that overwhelming. It is not normal for a young child of three or four to, you know, not want to participate in those types of activities, especially something like a library story time that is gen generally pretty quiet and low key. If that is incredibly overwhelming for your child, they may have some type of anxiety or some type of sensory issue that is just a little bit too much for them. So you may just want to avoid those things or kind of stay on the perimeter or something like that to make it comfortable for your child until they are able to fully integrate themselves into that you know situation or whatever. They may just need a little bit more time. And lastly, the number one way, especially I have found around age four or so, is the meltdowns. Now there are temper tantrums and then there are meltdowns. A meltdown is not a temper tantrum. This is something that people get confused all the time and honestly it drives me crazy. A meltdown is not a temper tantrum. A meltdown is when your child is genuinely, genuinely really struggling with something and cannot process it and cannot deal with it. A temper tantrum is a fight of the will. A temper tantrum is I am upset about something and I want my way and that's it. That's not a meltdown. A meltdown is not that at all. A meltdown is when a child literally cannot cope with what is going on in the situation. So if your child is, you know, throwing themselves on the floor a lot and screaming and crying and kicking, try to determine why this is happening. Is it a fight of the will? Are they just upset and pushing their boundaries or are they genuinely struggling with something and cannot cope? So that, that is something to really, really consider. A lot of people will see kids having a tantrum and say, oh, my kid's having a meltdown again. Oh, they're having a meltdown again. It's not the same thing. A meltdown is not a temper tantrum. Now, as we get to the grade school years, a sensory processing disorder, a lot of the time can change. Most of these things will still carry on, but they may be able to adapt better. So like they may have meltdowns on a, a regular basis still. They will definitely also continue to feel those sensitivities to fabrics and foods and sounds and lights and things like that. But they may, as they get older, learn how to cope better. And so some of the things that you will see with the grade school age children is that um, continuing from the preschool age, when they're at a playground or a school or something like that, they'll stay to the side. They don't always kind of integrate themselves and become a part of what is going on. They struggle with social settings. They may actually act younger than their age. They may not be at the same emotional level that the other children are in their age group. They may seem awkward or they may play too rough in social settings and not realizing that they're rough. Children who are hyposensitive tend to be rough without realizing that they are. They are not trying to be naughty. They are not trying to be mean. They just um, like that sensory input and it feels good to them, but they don't realize that most other children don't feel that way and it hurts them. And so that can be a struggle. They may get in trouble at school because they are not, they're just trying to get that sensory input and they're not trying to be bad, but they don't know the boundaries because they may not be developmentally at a place where they understand that the way that they're behaving is not really age appropriate. 
Something else that is commonly found with kids with a sensory processing disorder is that they tend to be a little bit developmentally behind as they hit those school years because they struggle with things like using writing utensils or cutting with scissors or things like that. Those fine motor skills can sometimes be very, very difficult for them. So they tend to fall behind a little bit. So that's something to be aware of. If you see that in combination with a lot of these other sensitivities, it may actually be related to a sensory processing disorder and not a learning delay or a disability or something like that. Those things can sometimes be connected to one another. And one of the biggest things that you'll see at this age is the difficulty with transitions. I did a video about this. I will link to it up above. Transitions are very difficult for a child with a sensory processing disorder. And as they get to that grade school age, especially if they're in public school or private school, there's so many transitions throughout the day and it is such a struggle. And there are some children who will struggle silently all day. They will hold all of the stress inside of them. They will make those transitions, but they will be struggling internally. And when they come home, they tend to fall apart and have meltdowns. And it may seem to you like, well, my child is doing so well at school and then they come home and they're a mess. This, what am I doing wrong? I must be doing something wrong. No, you're not. You have provided them a safe place. This is the place where they are most comfortable. This is the place where they are most vulnerable. It is a good thing. It is a good thing that they're able to cope and able to kind of get through the day and then come home and let down. That is a good thing. So don't feel like you are, you know, feeling as a parent or that there's something wrong with your home or there's something wrong with your child. It is completely normal. It is completely normal for them to be mature enough to kind of hold themselves together and then come home and let down and let all of that go. So if you are seeing these types of struggles in your child, you may want to talk with your pediatrician about it because your pediatrician is the first place to go. They will be able to point you in the right direction if you need to go see a psychologist or an occupational therapist or something like that. Those are the people to talk with first. Now, as you get to the middle school years, sensory processing disorder can change. Like I said, all the things will still kind of carry through, but they will cope differently and they will respond differently. Especially these years, they are very hormonal and going through lots of different changes. So they may start acting more impulsively, more so than, you know, would be age appropriate, or they may be more aggressive or more, um, just more emotional, but more than more, because when kids get to this age, they are more emotional and more aggressive and things like that, just because of all these hormones and it's just very difficult. But for a child with a sensory processing disorder, it's even just slightly more difficult. It's just the emotions are even stronger or the testosterone feeling in a guy is just slightly more stronger. And so it, it's just a little bit more difficult for them. And during these years, they are also like growing a lot more and physically changing. And kids with a sensory processing disorder who specifically struggle with like their proprioceptive sense where they really can't feel their own body in their space, they will become clumsier. They will not do as well as sports. They will just kind of be a little bit more awkward, more so than a middle schooler. That age is just kind of the age of awkwardness, but you can see in a child with a sensory processing disorder, it's like slightly more, it's slightly more profound than, you know, just a regular neurotypical child or something like that. You can really, really see a difference. So they may be acting more impulsively, but doing so and tripping and getting, then getting angry about that because they're frustrated with their own body that they just aren't as great at controlling. So it can be a time that can be very volatile. Honestly, it can be a lot of ups and downs and the normal middle school years have their ups and downs, but with sensory processing disorder, it's like, whoa, and then way back down and way back up and way back down. It's just, it's just profound. And so as a parent of a child with a sensory processing disorder in those middle school years, you need an extra dose of patience because it's hard enough. And then to add all these difficult, just think about what your child is feeling. Think about how hard everything is for them, how they're feeling everything very profoundly, more so than just an average person. And so I think you just have to be very patient with them. And that's kind of the only way to get through it. Be very patient, be very practical and rational. And that is kind of the best thing that you can do. And then in the high school years, still all of these things kind of carry on into the high school years, but they start to get a little bit more kind of emotionally regulated. But a lot of huge transitions are coming up. They are preparing for college. They are taking, you know, SAT or ACT or tests like that. There's a lot of stressors. There are a lot of things that are going on that for an average person would be very stressful. It's a lot of change. But for someone with a sensory processing disorder who struggles with transitioning and who struggles with extra anxiety, those times are even harder. So once again, it's time to be very, very patient and just be aware of your child. And one of the good things that I have seen with a sensory processing disorder is that 
as the child ages, they are able to regulate themselves a little bit better than when they were very, very young. Children who are very young with a sensory processing disorder really they don't even know what to do with themselves. They're still learning their bodies. They're still understanding, you know, how to behave and how to act and things like that. But as they get a little bit older, even just the basic peer pressure of life kind of pushes people with a sensory processing disorder to behave a certain way and they are able to adapt. Now, one thing to take note of is a sensory processing disorder is not something that you grow out of. You don't grow out of it. It is just the way that you are, you know, the way that you have been created. You have a sensory processing disorder and you will always have it. But as you get older, you will learn tips and tricks and ways to manage it a little bit better. As you mature, you will learn these things on your own or with the help of your parents or with an occupational therapist or your doctor or things like that. There are so many ways to help you to kind of be the best person that you can be, even though there are lots of ways that you are struggling behind the scenes. So as a parent of children with sensory processing disorders, I think the best thing that you can do is just be patient and be aware of the fact that your child is struggling. Because honestly, if you just try to treat them like anybody else and just say, well, you're fine, you know, just ignore it, you'll be fine. It's not always helpful. Sometimes you just really do need to give them that extra dose of compassion because they really do need it. Life is just slightly harder for them. And it's just the cross that they have to bear. It's just the way that their life is. And as they grow up, it doesn't go away, but they are able to learn to cope just a little bit better. I hope this video was helpful to you. I am sure many of you guys are kind of in the throes of this sensory processing disorder and you are struggling with young children and you're trying to figure out what to do. So let me tell you that over time, I promise you that it will get better, especially if you've reached out to a pediatrician or an occupational therapist and try to get some help for your children. That's the best thing that you can possibly do. We all struggle with some types of sensory needs and things like that, but for a person with a sensory processing disorder, it is profound. It is more than that, and they struggle on a day-to-day -day basis. So we must always show them love and compassion and patience. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions for me, please put them in the comments down below. I would love to help you out if I can. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos like this, and have a great day.